something to think about, dearest people. Um, you know, this, this, this Buddhist approach to the mind, one way of talking is that we've got these different um, states, these different conceptual stories in the mind. But because they're so, so instinctive, they just feel natural. We don't, we don't hear the conceptuality underneath them, you know. And they drive us, and this is the, the ones that cause us so much pain, you know. So one of them is this intense, um, as Lama Serpa calls it, grasping at permanent me. We can, and we can, we can see the workings of this, can't we, you know? Let's say when bad things are happening or you feel like you're depressed or you're angry or you're jealous, something is there, and it's true, it's there. What we do is we over-exaggerate it. We see it, we see it as set in stone, and then we think, this is me. I mean, we really recognise this, you know? And we do exactly the same with other people. They do a certain bad thing, then anger arises in our mind, we paint the whole person with that, with that brush, and then we say, that is that person. And we see it as permanent. We see it as permanent. So one mistake is over-exaggerating, say, our own misery, you know, our own depression and kind of low self-esteem over-exaggerates my badness, but then what, then what we do is we set it in stone. This is just tragic, you know? I mean, the most fundamental, anybody with half a brain can see that things are not set in stone. Things change, they're dynamic, millis, you know, second by second, things are changing. So we have to kind of argue with ourselves. And so this, when everything's lovely, then that's fantastic, it's wonderful to be happy, but then we set that in stone. Now I'm happy, now I've found happiness, and we think that's permanent. And of course, because it's not, because things change, then we collapse, we fall into despair, and now we think that is permanent and we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. We can see this, you know. So we have to argue with these, these misconceptions. This is really, we have to be our own therapist. Be, it's cognitive therapy. Argue with these misconceptions. But we have to recognise them. The trouble is we, we only notice them when they're fully emotional, you know. But we have to dig deep, dig down, drill down and get to hear the story that informs that emotion and argue with it. It's like being rational. You, you know, your roommates, I've got all these, we've all got these roommates and we have all the unhappy, neurotic, ridiculous ones that we believe in, that exaggerate and then we have the positive ones but they're often, they're hiding, they're not coming out so we've got to consciously bring them out and they're the, they're the sensible ones, the kind ones, the appropriate ones, the intelligent ones, the, the, those thoughts in your mind and they argue with the other ones, you be your own friend. It's a really simple way of putting it and we can all do it but we have to have the will to do it and we have to see the benefit which is being more content, more fulfilled, more courageous. That's our potential.